Hi, this is Dave Kale. Sh should you compartmentalize your Christianity? Here's a comment that uh, that I'm sure you have heard, at least maybe not word for word, but you've heard this idea. Quote, I practice my Christian faith when I involve myself and my family in the programs of the church. My business is my business, and that's something else. The two don't have much to do with each other. End quote. Now that comment expresses a pretty common view of the relationship between Christianity and business. My guess is that most Christian business people hold that belief that Christianity is about church and business is business and they're two separate things. Now it's easy to see why so many people believe that. You know, on the business side of the, of the equation, it fits comfortably into the worldly system of business wisdom and advice. Like a sandstorm, ideas about how to grow a business swirl all around us. Hundreds of books are written each year, thousands of blog posts, videos, and articles encompass us. You know, and they all put forth a worldly wisdom. And while there are a lot of good ideas and much to be gained from that wisdom, very few of those business people, consultants and authors, recognize God in those publications. And since God is not mentioned in the mass of materials, it's easy to conclude that business has nothing to do with him. On the other hand, on, on the Christian side of the equation, most folks promote the compartmentalized idea as well, but they do it much more subtly. For example, when the local pastor announces that the church building is God's house, for example, he infers that everything else, including your business, is not. When he pressures you to be involved in the programs of the institution, he's promoting the idea that those programs are more important than anything else you could be doing, and that includes your business. Now, when years go by, Without any acknowledgement from the pulpit of the role of business in the kingdom, it's easy to draw the conclusion that there is no role for business in the kingdom. So you look at these two sides from the, from the secular side and from the Christian institutional church side, it's easy for the majority of Christian business people to accept the idea that business is one thing and Christianity is something else and the two don't meet. Unfortunately, that belief is one of the false beliefs it hinder us from achieving our business potential. It leads to negative consequences, and it is clearly taught against in the Bible. Let's, let's look at both those things. First, the negative consequences. First, that belief system that business and Christianity don't meet, that belief system limits the impact of God's people on the broader culture. There is a reason why our culture has rapidly transformed from a pro-Christian culture to one that is becoming increasingly anti-Christian in just a few decades. Since, since the compartmentalized belief keeps Christian people and their influence clustered together in institutional churches, their influence is only on those who are like-minded and attend those, those same churches. So the broader culture is deprived of the salt and light of Christian influence through business. Salt has no impact unless it's sprinkled over that which is not salt. So too with Christians. As long as we remain huddled together in the confines of the institutional church, we are not impacting those around us. Now, compartmental Christianity promotes the hypocrisy that the non-Christian world so regularly points out in church-going Christians. The thoughtful non-Christian sees a conflict in the Christian who on Sunday morning espouses love and grace and then acts on the principle of return on investment on Monday. Hypocrisy is the word used to describe that by those on the outside. And frankly, it provides sufficient reason to avoid the same thing. So by no means the final consequence, but probably the most devastating, is the negative impact on those outside of church-going Christianity who, who have a sincere interest in connecting with God, but who are put off by the link between church and Christianity that the compartmentalized beliefs promote. 
ask 10 non-Christians about Christianity, and nine of them will speak in terms of church and the negative experience they've had with that. They equate Christianity with churchianity, and they are turned off by it. On page 47 of my book, quote, Is the Institutional Church Really the Church? I quote some amazing research by the Barna Group who found that, quote, of non-Christian adults aged 16 to 29, 82% had gone to a Christian church at least some time in their lives. Now that's 82% of non-Christian adults aged 16 to 29. And and what was the impact of that church attendance? Quote the Barna Group again, quote, a majority have tried churches and found them desperately lacking relevance. End quote. They equate church with Christianity because that's what their compartmentalized belief proposes. And when they do, they find church irrelevant and then turn off completely to Christianity. So, you know, the list of negative consequences can go on and on, but let's turn our attention to the biblical position. In the very beginning of the Bible, in the first words that God spoke to Adam, he created the precedent that he would give work and, and business by extension to mankind as its primary occupation, and that he would interact mankind in his work. Now, before spouses before scripture, before prophets, before priests, before pastors, before church buildings, God created work and showed that he would engage with us and interact with us as we strove to do the work that he gives us to do. Business is God's preferred venue to interact with mankind. It's also his system for building character and developing faith. Almost all of the great godly leaders in the Bible were honed in the cauldron of business. Now, here's a small sample uh, from my book, page 83, the good book on business. Let's just think of some of the great names in the Bible. Abraham was one of the most successful of all bi uh, biblical business people. And he headed an enterprise of thousands was chosen to be the father of the Israelites, a businessman. Jacob was a third generation business owner, and he fathered what was to become the twelve tribes of Israel. Moses was in the practice was in the business of raising sheep and was chosen to lead the Hebrews out of Egypt into the promised land. David was employed by his father in his family business when he was chosen to be the second king of Israel. Jesus spent the majority of his life as a small business person. He was a carpenter. Paul was a tent maker, a sole proprietor, who led the advance of Christianity into most of the known world. So I mean, this is just a sample of the role of business in the kingdom. The bottom line is this. The compartmentalized belief is one of the most devastating and insidious beliefs of them all because it spins off dire consequences and prevents us from guiding our businesses to their full potential by separating them from our Christian beliefs. Our businesses will never achieve their full potential until we rid ourselves of this compartmentalized belief. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye. Before you go, can I ask you to just take a second and consider the good book on business? That's my latest book. You've heard me refer to it. Uh, this, is, this is what Chris Patton, Chris is a uh, business owner, president of Mike Patton Auto Family in Atlanta and a, and a business consultant. This is what Chris had to say about it. Quote, I've been an intentional Christian business owner and leader for the past 13 plus years, but I have to say that Dave introduced me to some ideas in this book that I've never encountered. I am blown away by his concepts and the scriptural support he provides for each. 
Before I even finished this book, I knew I was committed to reading it again soon. I can't wait to begin implementing some of his ideas. This is absolutely a must read for any Christian in the business world and even those who are not but should consider it. That's Chris Patton of Mike Patton Auto Family. Would you would you just do a, go a Google search on the good book on business? You can buy it from Amazon. You can buy it from my website. Doesn't matter. Your views of business will never be the same. You you cannot think about business the way that you used to do after you read this book. It is transformational. So I don't want you to go any further until you have read the good book on business. Okay? That's it. Bye-bye.